welcome um, in this tutorial we are going to derive this property that if you have a molar property and if you have the molar property for uh, two different systems and uh, then the line joining them actually gives the molar property for the mechanical mixture. So, this is what we want to prove and uh, this derivation is from uh, Porter and De Sterling and it is based on simple uh, trigonometry. So, it is uh, using some um, similar triangles that we are going to derive this property. For doing that, so let us consider a uh, molar free energy for example. Okay. So, I will consider a molar free energy. So, this is G molar free energy and then I have two points. One point corresponds to what is so, this is the composition anyway. So, and x b alpha and the corresponding point is basically the molar free energy for alpha phase and then I have x b beta corresponding to this is the g beta. Now, what we want to prove is that if you take a straight line connecting the two for any composition that you take some say x b naught basically will give you the molar free energy for a mechanical mixture of alpha and beta and different points on this curve basically correspond to how much of alpha and how much of beta you are going to take. So, this is what we want to prove. To do that, so let me mark this point as A, this point as B, this point as C. Okay. Now, I am going to mark this point as D and this point as E and this point as F and I am going to take a line which will go like that okay. and this is G and this is C as I have said. So, this, this line. So, now uh, the line is drawn in such a way um, that the triangle B, uh, C and G is uh, similar to the triangle A, C, D is uh, similar to triangle A, C, D. Okay. B, C, G is similar to A, C, D. So, that is the first thing and the second thing is uh, the triangle D, E, G is similar to D, F, C. Okay. Triangular D E G is similar to triangle D F C. Okay. Now, the point uh, A D for example, is the molar free energy of alpha right. A D is G alpha that is the molar free energy of alpha. Similarly, C F is nothing but G beta which is the molar free energy of of beta. Now, what we want to prove is that if I take some point uh, E that is the molar free energy of alpha plus beta the mechanical mixture and the way we are going to show is that that is uh, molar free energy of uh, how much of alpha and how much of beta. So, that how much of alpha beta we are going to use uh, lever rule to prove. So, in this figure now it is easy to show that B G by A D is nothing but B C by A C right. B G by A D is nothing but B C by A C. So, that is one rule and G E that is this by C F is equal to um, A B by A C right. G E by C F is nothing but a B by A C. So, why are we doing that? B C by A C would basically give the amount of alpha and A B by A C will basically give me the amount of beta, but that is this is by lever rule. right? So, by lever rule we know that this quantity that we have defined that we have geometrically shown is going to be equal to the corresponding quantities of alpha and beta right. So, by lever rule what do we get um, B C by A C 
mole of alpha right and a b by a c mole of beta um, will equal 1 mole. So, if you take 1 mole of material and if you take that overall alloy composition to be x b naught then you see that it is b c by a c mole of alpha and a b by a c mole of beta. Okay. Now, b g and g e what do they represent uh, in the figure? So, so we had this uh, figure. So, let me go back to the figure. So, b g and g e now I want to show that they represent the corresponding contributions from the alpha phase and the beta phase. So, this should correspond to the beta contribution, this should correspond to the alpha contribution. Okay. So, B G and G E what do they represent? Represent contributions from alpha and beta phases to the total free energy. for 1 mole of alloy. So, in other words what we have shown is that suppose if you take the if this is g alpha if this is g beta then anywhere you go that point you can show that by lever rule that point tells you how much of alpha and how much of for example, if you are on this point it is all alpha if you are on this point it is all beta but somewhere in between it will tell you what is the fraction of alpha and what is the fraction of beta. Now, from the fraction of alpha how much energy you get and from the fraction of beta how much free energy you get. So, that combination so B g plus G e is nothing but G of alpha plus beta where alpha how much alpha is it that is given by B c by A c and how much of beta it is it is given by A b by A c. So, what is the importance of this result and this result we are proving uh, because uh, we wanted to show that any time you have a concave curvature uh, then uh, you will always have free energy reduction because a mechanical mixture will have lesser free energy than that right. So, we, so we were looking at things like this. So, you had free energy versus composition and you had something like that. Then in this region you can see that if I take a phase of this and a phase of this and if I make a mechanical mixture for corresponding to some overall alloy composition then the mechanical mixture will have free energy here. So, if I have a homogeneous system then it has a free energy here. So, spontaneously this is going to reduce the free energy right. So, this is what is the importance and that is why if we keep on reducing this then I come to a common tangent construction. So, in this region the mechanical mixture has lower free energy than a homogeneous system. So, if you have the system alloy system in this composition range corresponding to the overall com alloy composition it is going to make the corresponding amounts of this phase and this phase and this mechanical mixture is what corresponds to the at this temperature then they would correspond to the miscibility cap. You can do it at different temperatures then you get this miscibility gap. Okay. So, this miscibility gap is there because in this composition region the mechanical mixture has lower free energy that is true because the mechanical mixture the free energy lies on the straight line connecting them and that is what we have proved using this. Okay. So, this that is why this derivation is important this is to show that a mechanical mixture will have free energy lying on the straight line connecting the molar free energies of the two end phases. Okay, so, that is from where the common tangent construction also uh, becomes very useful or, or important for the cases that we are looking at. On the other hand when you do not have this concave curvature if you have a convex free energy any line that you join connecting the two points will always lie above the line and in fact that is the mathematical definition of what it means to say that uh, some uh, curve is concave. Uh, if you take uh, any two points and if you connect they lie below uh, um, the, 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 the convex line lies below 
this uh, straight line connecting that. So, mechanical mixture has higher energy and a homogeneous alloy will have lower energy that is why it will always form a homogeneous phase in those cases. Okay. So, that is why in the in this free energy construction for example, in this regime you have one phase and in this region also you have one phase typically they are called alpha and beta and here you have alpha plus beta and the alpha beta n compositions are covered by this. That is because in this region is where the straight line connecting them has lower free energy than the uh, free energy curve. Okay. So, that, so this is the reason why we derived this important result. Thank you.